Can you show me the slide, please? <coughs> <coughs> Our next speaker is the gentleman on the right, uh, the second on the right uh, of this picture. Uh, and I think our honor, yes, is right here. If you can recognize him, <laughs> of course, uh, to his left is uh, Professor Bauer. Can anybody tell us who this person is? Charles 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 before the picture disappears, may I mention that uh, last Christmas, uh, Professor Schreit wrote me he would hope, if possible, that he would be here today. He is the person from whom I have learned what the palaces really is. Uh, but he's 86 years old and his uh, health is uh, feeble, so unfortunately he had uh, to uh, abandon the plan, <coughs> so he is not here today. But it's nice that we see his picture at least today. Thank you. I don't think I don't think I, I did it. Thank you. I don't know who coined uh, the phrase the Dutch school of catalysis. Uh, I there is a debate on that. <laughs> but I will tell you there is no debate at all on the fact that uh, Wolfgang Sachtwey was the dean uh, until he became emeritus, <laughs> the dean of the uh, Dutch School of Catalysis. Great pleasure to be uh, among his friends today. Uh, I apologize for changing the, the title, but uh, I was not ready with the other talk because I wanted to present unpublished data. So I shifted the uh, uh, subject to one which is uh, perhaps more uh, fashionable today, uh, which you see the decomposition of nitric oxide, and I will present uh, uh, unpublished data. They are old, but uh, I would like uh, to uh, submit to you that they are still uh, uh, of current interest. What started uh, this work in the early 70s was uh, the uh, Clean Air Act. And I got some money from uh, the uh, uh, EPA. Uh, at that time, they were giving money to universities, no more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we started to do some work on uh, uh, nitric oxide. And uh, uh, what prompted uh, this uh, investigation here uh, was uh, something that uh, fascinated me. Uh, work, extremely careful work in the Ryerson's laboratory by uh, uh, Roger Solbakken. And uh, this is a summary of the many, his many observations. As temperature uh, goes up, uh, the rate of adsorption of NO on gamma alumina goes down. So the activation energy is negative. The uh, rate of absorption is first order in nitric oxide, and the uh, rate of absorption is uh, atrociously uh, small. It takes 120 days. It took uh, 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 Solbakken 120 days to get uh, less than 10% of a monolayer. Uh, on the aluminum. So what uh, was the interpretation uh, at, at the time? And his interpretation uh, was uh, simple. He said, we have some equilibrium between gas phase NO, physically adsorbed <coughs> NO, and then the uh, physically adsorbed NO is transformed into some uh, atom coefficient uh, between the two species when they cross from one uh, electronic state to another. Uh, it's also known uh, that uh, sometimes uh, the uh, 
these rates decrease as temperature goes up, so everything uh, was fine. But I thought, my goodness, this is unique in, uh, uh, in uh, surface uh, uh, chemistry, and maybe we should uh, examine this a little more. And uh, so we decided to start this, and this is what we did about it. And uh, this is all in an unpublished uh, dissertation of uh, Barry Turnham, uh, who, after uh, his uh, PhD with me, disappeared in England to work with Jeff Bond, and I lost total contact with him uh, until a year or so ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to publish the, the work. <laughs> <laughs> So, what I, uh, with, 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 uh, with, with TPD and uh, uh, paramagnetic susceptibility and uh, uh, co control of uh, active <coughs> sites by dehydroxylation and poisoning on alumina, uh, I want to uh, try on you a, uh, a little more complicated mechanism. This is not catalysis, this is absorption. But I think it pertains to catalysis as we shall conclude. What I think uh, happens uh, is that, yes, there is a, a, an equilibrated absorption, but which is uh, followed by uh, a, let's call it dimerization. I don't really know what happens, but it leads from a, a paramagnetic to a diamagnetic uh, state. Uh, I, I say this, but uh, that's, not, that's mo not a molecular uh, interpretation uh, for other people to decide. But the key uh, in our uh, interpretation is that this dimer, whatever you call it, uh, in a rate determining step goes to physically absorb N2O uh, at low temperature uh, and an oxygen atom that goes into the trap. What is the trap? The trap is a uh, vacancy at the uh, surface of gamma alumina after uh, uh, controlled dehydroxylation. What happens after that uh, is uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the NO then reacts with uh, the oxygen, <coughs> uh, which is absorbed to form NO2, then N2O3, and the net, the net uh, uh, stoichiometric reaction is that for each site, uh, there are four NO gas phase molecules that form these uh, stoichiometric products. So that's what I would like uh, to uh, uh, show you. First of all, what about the uh, control of the uh, active sites? The control of the active sites is, follows the old prescription of uh, John Perry. See how old all these things are? A beautiful first Monte Carlo uh, calculation of what happens to a certain plane of alumina uh, that has been dehydrated to uh, the 94% extent. And uh, the crosses are exposed aluminum uh, ions, Lewis uh, sites, and uh, uh, the OH uh, remaining sites are here, and the rest is, uh, is, uh, 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 is oxygen. And uh, uh, so by, de by uh, increasing the temperature at which you dehydroxylate the starting gamma alumina, you can control, uh, of course, the uh, concentration of size, and you can poison them by, with ammonia or uh, uh, other molecules. <coughs> the first reversible absorption of NO on these sites, well, uh, we <coughs> know damn well uh, that uh, poor Langmuir uh, would be out of luck here. Uh, so uh, the uh, Langmuir isotherm is, uh, is deformed, as usual, by something else that's uh, more of this type. And I say one half, uh, the, the surface coverage should be uh, some power of the uh, concentration of NO, and we say one half because that's simple and it agrees uh, with the observations. So, uh, after this adsorption, reversible adsorption, we uh, <coughs> form the diamagnetic uh, adsorbed species from the paramagnetic one. And, uh, we can control uh, the, 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 this, uh, the, the uh, magnetic susceptibility by changing the concentration of the active sites. <coughs> and uh, all uh, the many observations 
uh, of uh, Barry Turnham can be summarized on this plot. Uh, Pre-treatment temperature, the more you go on the right, uh, the more uh, Lewis sites you have. The more you are expected under constant conditions to, uh, to uh, 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 dimerize. So diamagnetism is here, paramagnetism is there, and I think that quite clearly uh, uh, you have all, everything on the diagonal, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, this tells you that the more uh, paramagnetic so more diamagnetic species are, are, are formed as you uh, increase the concentration of Lewis sites. Besides, if you take uh, samples that have been pre-treated at the same temperature, and uh, you absorb ammonia or tetracyclinethylene, uh, you find that you, uh, by killing those sites, you go up, therefore you are more paramagnetic, and I think that is a rather uh, clear identification, not of the nature of this timer, that I don't know, but on, on the fact that it is, this, that species is diamagnetic. But really, I think the key to our uh, observations, uh, uh, which I think is, is still interesting today, uh, is that N2O is the first product uh, following this dimerization. And, uh, uh, the formation of NTO was identified by TPD and again uh, uh, controlled by the <coughs> temperature of dehydration of the, uh, of the aluminum. So let's uh, now show the uh, 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 TPD um, uh, spectra. Uh, first of all, let's convince ourselves that uh, silica doesn't work. Doesn't work. Uh, there is only one peak, desorption peak. But uh, on, a, uh, on a dehydroxylated alumina, uh, you have uh, a, a peak next to it, which we identified to be due to uh, uh, N2O dissolving. This is NO dissolving. We start at uh, around 150 Kelvin, and uh, the N2O appear uh, uh, essentially at 250, uh, the peak maximum at 250 Kelvin. So this slow. Uh, the transformation at the surface uh, is the one that leads to N2O, which remains at so, uh, uh, and then uh, it is getting out at a, 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 a little higher temperature. Now, uh, let's go uh, slowly here. Uh, we, you shall see what happens at increasingly uh, uh, higher uh, uh, temperatures of dehydration. <coughs> Not much here. Then you start to have a second peak. The uh, second peak increases uh, in, uh, in uh, intensity. Let's go up in temperature. And uh, you see that the, this uh, N2O peak uh, uh, keeps uh, moving up. Uh, and it keeps moving up. And until you reach uh, a high temperature. Uh, and to, to be sure, let's now go backwards and absorb n on the alumina, and that's, that's the uh, uh, identification uh, uh, of the uh, desorption product. Now, after that, uh, we decided that uh, uh, at these low temperatures, a little more happens, and you form these uh, species, and, and, and O2, and then 203 uh, to uh, finish with this stoichiometric reaction. And <coughs> this was checked, I would say, semi quantitatively uh, by measuring the, uh, the species that dissolve at higher temperatures uh, from the N203 and the NO2. Uh, but it is certainly in agreement with this overall uh, uh, stoichiometric equation. And again, it can be controlled by changing the uh, number uh, of sites uh, originally present uh, and poison them with ammonia and uh, 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 check the, this <coughs> mechanism, uh, I would say, uh, semi-quantitatively. Uh, the products that uh, dissolve at higher temperatures are here, and ultimately, you see that 
the oxygen that is trapped on the Lewis side uh, comes out, and that's at a very high temperature. And uh, we decided on the basis of other work, uh, other, other work uh, in the early 70s that that's why uh, uh, NO catalytic decomposition would not work. Uh, the Holy Grail, I don't think it works today. And that's because O2, uh, the product, one of the products inhibits, kills the sites. Uh, and uh, there you are. So if you don't use hydrogen or uh, ammonia or methane or something else, uh, you are going to be stuck uh, with your uh, effort to do useful, uh, amenable, uh, uh, economic, uh, catalytic uh, decomposition of NO. Uh, and uh, that's why I still, I call it still the holy grail to find a way to do it. Uh, Yes, we, uh, we checked uh, the, uh, the stoichiometry uh, by changing the uh, uh, temperature of dehydration, poison with ammonia, <coughs> but I want really to uh, uh, then tie a quantitative assessment of this mechanism. Um, the, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, surface catalysis, we all, all are very proud to report an activation energy, uh, which is totally in uninformative. <laughs> uh, pre exponential factors can be uh, much more informative, and I would like to give you an example here. So I would like uh, to uh, 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 try on our, uh, the, the, uh, the analysis of the pre exponential factor of. Uh, that, that uh, corresponds to uh, our mechanism. And this is uh, what our mechanism, postulated mechanism, uh, leads to. The uh, uh, rate of the rate determining step, which is the dimerization, uh, should be proportional to a equilibrium constant for the reversible adsorption, a, reversi a, a, a rate const a, an equilibrium constant for the reversible uh, dimerization, the uh, uh, rate constant for the uh, decomposition of the dimer in 2 and 2 and that's of oxygen. It all ends up first order in NO, as observed by Solbakken. The activation energy here, which is made of uh, uh, heats of adsorption and so on, and the activation energy is, is, is his. I, I cannot calculate that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but we can uh, calculate estimate, guess, whatever, uh, the pre-exponential factors uh, of uh, these uh, equilibrium constants and of the uh, uh, rate constant for the rate determining step. Now, uh, I decided uh, when we did this with my more recent collaborators uh, uh, a few months ago that uh, we uh, should not be uh, seduced by uh, fitting data and that we would take for the pre-exponential factors a single source of information, whether it's the best or not, I don't know. But we decided to, to go to this book, to, to this book, take page uh, 48 for, for two, and so on and so forth. One, two, and three. And so that's what we did. And uh, uh, with, with our fetching, and uh, the result is something that uh, uh, I think makes us blush a little bit. <coughs> Remember the activation, the apparent activation energy we took from cell back. So we're only playing with exponential factors, and this is uh, calculated or guess, estimated, whatever. And, and that, that is uh, somewhat uh, worrisome. <laughs> but I think that it tells us. Uh, that it is not a low transmission coefficient by, by a factor of 10 to minus 8, but it is this slow activated, uh, activated decomposition uh, of the um, adsorbed species, dimer, whatever it is, uh, to the uh, N2O. And that is, I think, the message uh, I uh, wanted to present to you today. Now, uh, this is not catalysis, but I think that uh, you, if I look now at the current uh, uh, literature, there are so many papers appearing now 
Uh, I, we better publish this rapidly before it comes obsolete again. Uh, but uh, just, just, uh, <laughs> just recently, uh, uh, well, it's already getting old. Uh, uh, but the uh, Spanish group there uh, concludes uh, uh, from a study of serum oxide that you have these pairs of, uh, uh, of uh, frequencies that are responsible for the formation of, of N2O. And after <coughs> all, uh, uh, something happened, as, as you know, uh, with the uh, Holy Grail, and that was uh, what I call the I Iwamoto effect. The Iwamoto effect has been <laughs> stupendous, and, uh, but I, 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 I go to his own data of copper CSM5. And uh, he and others, Keith Hall and, and many of them, have observed uh, that as you go up in temperature, uh, the uh, uh, rate goes to a maximum, this is a conversion, but, and then starts to fall. And uh, this is uh, what our little model uh, tells us, and it is entirely due to the fact that the uh, uh, dimerization, uh, what we call dimerization, that it's to and true, is exothermic. And this is really where uh, the uh, main effect of the transmission coefficient, the slowness, uh, uh, is, and also the uh, temperature coefficient, which is anomalous. And, uh, uh, our colleagues in Berkeley uh, are, are analyzing this in <coughs> agonizing uh, detail. This is for the copper uh, ZSM5. And uh, I think that uh, uh, there are uh, many steps there. I don't know whether they are all uh, genetically significant. Uh, um, they are being uh, uh, now quantified by, uh, by a quantum mechanical calculation. Uh, but you recognize the appearance of N2O, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, what I think, again, I, uh, as the first product, and that's, I think, what I wanted to, to tell you. N2O will probably never be detected above a certain temperature. It decomposes as it is formed, uh, but I, I think that this is a mechanism of uh, 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 associative catalysis as opposed to dissociative catalysis. Uh, where uh, you get where you want to go uh, by association. Uh, somehow two NO molecules or whatever uh, coming from here and there, NO, ammonia, whatever, uh, they get together uh, to form the uh, NN bond. Uh, and not because NO splits and uh, two nitrogen atoms are recombined, two oxygen atoms are uh, recombined. And uh, uh, such associative modes of catalysis are expected to present low activation energies and low exponential factors. So that's what we observe here. Thank you. Questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to uh, receive a question? Yours first. <laughs> um, in, 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 on the alumina, you, you have a product uh, aside from N2O, is N, N2O3. Mm -hmm. On the copper DSM5, N2O3 has never been observed. Uh, uh, even remember, though remember, I am working uh, uh, below room temperature. That's right. But uh, is that. Uh, was that N2O3 product actually observed in the, es escaping from the surface, from your catalyst, from your alumina? No, no, it decomposes. So uh, it decomposes. So the N2O3 upon is a, a mm -hmm. low temperature intermediate that you postulate the surface, That's right. and is one that has not been postulated for the high temperature copper DSM5. I, I just wanted to understand this. Uh, this is, remember, uh, we, we, we start at 150 Kelvin. By uh, 250 Kelvin, the N2O comes out, and then up, up to six, 700 Kelvin for the oxygen final. And, uh, and no spectroscopic uh, uh, identification of anything. There is a lot that has been done since. Just a remark on the copper ZSM5, it is easy 
to uh, observe uh, somewhat higher temperature, but not much higher. Room temperature is a bit above the disproportionation where three NOs give uh, one N2O and one uh, NO2. Now, if you have lower temperature than the NO2 and the NO uh, form a loose add up, you have to add two or three. So, this is basically the same chemistry, not the mechanism on the last slide. We really have strong uh, reasons to believe it is a different mechanism and it makes use of uh, the uh, pairs of couples <coughs> with uh, bridging oxygen. But that was not your, uh, uh, the, the issue of your talk. Uh, I uh, remember that uh, uh, when you presented your work uh, for the uh, NO ammonia reaction, uh, you also insisted that uh, there was a nitrogen coming from NO and a nitrogen coming from some other intermediate uh, the, the, the ammonia. I think that's what I read uh, in, in the other work. Uh, I uh, uh, selected among many the uh, mechanism of my friends at Berkeley because I'm more familiar with Sure, oh, no. oh, sorry. Good. Uh, NO occurs in a uh, low temperature metric medium with a yielding uh, solid surface. So, this means the pre exponential factors that value might be drastically influenced by four sides. Four sides? Four sides of a blue. Because, because uh, <coughs> uh, NO dimerization yeah. occurs yes. in low temperature yes. metrics without using any solid. No. Uh, actually, uh, uh, dimerization occurs uh, just uh, just if you freeze uh, uh, NO uh, and we get to the liquid phase. And the dimagnetic, there is a dimagnetic species that it has been identified uh, just without any surface, just, just uh, at low temperature. Uh, but I don't think it is the same species. Uh, and uh, uh, again, here, uh, yes, there are there have been uh, infrared uh, spectroscopic investigations, and uh, there, there are uh, uh, gem uh, <coughs> uh, diet <coughs> nitrosyl compounds are being proposed, and I, I will take no, uh, no side on, on this at the moment. All I, I think our data indicate is that something happens by which from a diamagnetic species, you produce a, a paramagnetic species, you produce a diamond, diamagnetic one. Last question. One question. Is it possible that iron impurities in the alumina play a role in the magnetism instead of vacancies, washing vacancies? It's possible, but you could uh, uh, see that uh, there is a pretty clear correlation between what uh, you expect to happen with increasing uh, temperatures of the hydroxylation, uh, which would uh, create more Lewis sites <coughs> and, and uh, the observed phenomena here. Yeah, but then I would take the iron C plus and the Lewis site. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the number of, of, of sites here that are created, uh, according to Perry and many others, uh, is uh, far above any uh, uh, iron impurity. That, uh, that, that would be uh, present in, uh, in aluminum. We used uh, uh, pure aluminum. I can tell you, uh, of course, they had impurities, but it was so. Oh, thank you very much.